Hey there, this is Adam from Proval Technologies, and today I'm going to go over some tips to help you when you're working inside of Kaseya VSA. In today's video, we're going to go over views and how you can use them throughout Kaseya to help you work more efficiently. If you want to follow along, all you'll need to do is jump into your own VSA and we can get started. Before we get started, it's important to know what a view is and how it can help you. Think of a view as a filter for your agents. If you wanted to show only servers, you could use a view to accomplish that. Or if you wanted to show only machines with a certain version of Windows, or if you were just trying to show Linux machines, views are going to be the way that would make that happen. You could even drill down into even more granular data if you want, like agent versions, OS builds, pretty much anything. If there's something you want to filter on, this is the way to do it. All right. Once you've logged in, the first thing you're going to want to do is to make sure you're under the Agents section in your Navigation panel, and then select Manage Agents. Once you have that pulled up, you'll see that in the upper right-hand corner, we have a drop-down filter called View. This is where you select your view from. If you click it now, you'll most likely see some preloaded views that come with VSA. Or if anybody in your organization has created any, you'll see them here too. If you were to select any of these, you would see that the data in the lower panel would change to reflect the view that's been selected. But for us, we're going to make a new view. So the first thing you'll want to do is click the new button at the top of the screen. Once you've clicked that, a new screen is going to pop up, like the one you see on my screen here. Before we can go any farther, we'll need to click on the Save As button at the top and name our view. Do your best to make it as informative as possible using as few words as you can. This is just going to help you when you go to look for it later, so the easier to identify, the better. After you've named it and clicked on the OK button, you'll see the following screen. From here, you'll see that we can click some drop downs under you know, specific sections. For my example today, I'm going to set my view up to show only Windows 10 machines. So I'm going to click on the drop down arrow for OS info. And from there, I'm going to put a check mark in the OS type field. Next, I'm going to click the drop down and select my operating system. So in this case, Windows 10. And once we're done with that, we can go ahead to the next step. Once we have our options selected, we'll then go up and click the Save button at the top of the screen. After the view has been saved, we can close the Edit screen, which will bring us back to our VSA workspace. From here, we'll go back up to that View drop-down we looked at earlier and select the view that we just created. Once you've selected the view, you'll see that the data in the workspace has changed to reflect the view you've just selected. Pretty straightforward, right? Obviously, we created a very simple view in this video, but you can make them far, far more complicated, uh, as I mentioned you know, before we got started here. The advantage of creating views, aside from helping filter machines, is that you can use views in almost every other aspect of VSA. When it comes to patching, policy application, or reporting, these views will be invaluable. Want to apply policies to just Windows Server 2008 machines? No problem. Create a view for it. Then select a view when you're setting up your policy and you're good to go. These views are the basis of most automation you can create inside of VSA. With that, I'm gonna close out the video, but if you have any questions, feel free to post a comment below and I'll be happy to help if it's at all possible. Hope you have a great day.